Um, our next speaker is Dmitry Dmitriev. For a little bit of context, Species Flaw Group has worked historically with people who have legacy databases to migrate those forward. And generationally, this is increasingly common. We have a lot of people retiring and those people are the originators of some of the earliest databases on nomenclature out there, things that have been in development for 30 or 40 or 50 years even, um, way back from card catalogs. And so Dimitri is gonna talk a little bit about what it takes to get data from old systems to new systems. Dimitri. Well, it's more technical talk, uh, and uh, that's what's going on behind the scenes uh, in tax and work group, in species file group. Uh, so this is a slide uh, from the statistics, uh, all the data in tax and works. I will not talk much about the numbers, uh, but just to say that each uh, square represents each individual table in tax and works. That's basically to show how complicated uh, data model of the tax and works could be. And uh, we also might present this last uh, last year. So we try to classify our projects. Uh, some of the projects don't use definitely everything, uh, every functionality which we have in tax and works. Some projects more focused on nomenclature, some projects focused on the digitization information, literature, geospatial, uh, images, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and just a few examples, uh, in the natural history collection, um, which has more than 1 million records uh, and uh, managed by Tom and Michael Roth now. It comes from multiple uh, different uh, databases, so three different databases. Primary one is FileMaker database. And I would say, you see the diversity of the data, although the primary FileMaker database may have only uh, 10 tables, something like that, uh, and it's represented now more than 30 tables in tax and works. Um, uh, the same with uh, World Okinarinka database, the database I manage myself. It may have uh, about uh, 30 active tables in the original Microsoft Access database, but when converted to tax and works, now it's represented by probably like 60 different tables. Um, so Matt already showed that there are some functionality in tax and works to upload information. We have Darwin co uploader, which uh, gets a uh, tax name, uh, collect an event, uh, collection object or specimen. Uh, we have specialized nomenclature upload uh, and bibliography uploader, which using BibTeX information. Uh, those could be used as a quick start of the new project in tax and works. Uh, but what happens what, when you have large project managed in the external database, which has a lot of data, which doesn't exactly fit into one of those easy uploader. And as I mentioned, uh, the data may come with different formats. So we have data in Microsoft Access database, FileMaker database, um, just various Excel tables. Uh, sometimes uh, people manage to get their data exported as a structured uh, CSV or TSV file, or even unstructured document, uh, uh, Jeff working with a uh, Word PDF or HTML documents, which may have nomenclature information or other kind of information. So when I get this information, we try to normalize data and we usually work with CSV format. So whatever data we get, initially we convert data to CSV format and uh, UTF-8 encoding to basically preserve all the information we have in the database. When I work with the migration, I also use uh, Microsoft Access or Excel for data preview and basically to visually see what the data is represented in the initial database. Uh, then I go to the each individual table and uh, each individual table may have a list of the fields uh, and we try to match this uh, list of the field names to the tax and work schema. And you see an example, uh, 
this is probably half of the taxonomical tables from the Systema dipterorum uh, species file. And we have taxon, uh, taxon name, model, and taxon works, and all linked uh, tables which attach to the taxon names. It could be identifiers, it could be nodes, confidences, uh, taxon name relationship, etc., etc. So we look which fields exactly match to our model so we can transfer those fields uh, one to one. Uh, we see which columns uh, match to related uh, uh, fields of the related table. So we have to link those data to some other tables. And uh, we still have a list of data which uh, we can represent in taxon works, uh, works, but they don't exactly match to the model. So those could be uh, annotations uh, attached to the records. It's identifiers, nodes, uh, and converted to data attributes. So we try to preserve all the records, all the information available in the original database. Um, when we do custom data migration, we are trying to prioritize which data comes first. And basically uh, we start with low level information. We uh, bring people, we bring sources, sources have all sorts of the reliable people. Uh, then we go with nomenclature. Uh, nomenclature have citations, so sources go before that. Then once you have nomenclature, you can put some additional information like collecting event, uh, collection object, and some other information like biological association distribution. Um, nomenclature. Nomenclature is probably one of the most complicated models and taxon works. And it's complicated and simple at the same time. So it's literally just three tables and taxon works. Uh, it's taxon names. Uh, statuses or taxon name classification, uh, basically those statuses uh, which are linked to the single name, like nomen nodum. But we also have uh, uh, our local statuses. Uh, we can say that species is an adjective or genus is feminine. So we also treat those as taxon name classifications. And we have taxon name relationship, basically any two names which uh, link together, which could be linked together and uh, get special name for that kind of relationship. So this kind of relationship is uh, type species, synonym, or homonym, or basically anything links, uh, which links uh, to uh, taxa names together. And uh, we have, uh, working on this, uh, we built Nomen Ontology, and Nomen Ontology covers uh, statuses uh, for four codes of nomenclature, the logical, botanical, uh, uh, proteins and viruses, um, uh, bacterial and viruses. And again, this is an example of the statuses which we get from Systema dipterorum. They have uh, uh, about 80 statuses in their database, and uh, some of them exactly match to the, our nomen uh, ontology. Uh, some of them just represent combination of the statuses which we have in taxon works. And some of them combinations of statuses um, and relationship. And to be trying to, again, map those statuses to those statuses which we use in taxon works. Um, what happens uh, when the migration is built? Uh, we build a log long script, which basically uh, match the data to the schema uh, of the original database uh, to the taxon work database. We validate it on the local computer, my computer, Jeff's computer. Uh, we run the script on the one of the sandboxes uh, to get our uh, preliminary database. We ask user to join the project and validate the data. And once uh, we agree on the match, we basically run the migration on the production. Uh, when we're trying to uh, migrate, we try to preserve as much information as possible, and especially identifiers, original identifiers, uh, which could be useful for data validation, or if you find the errors in, in the migration, we can try to do like additional migration to uh, fix the data which we missed at the first pass. Um, some project migration uh, migrated to taxon works uh, using this one uh, this uh, method basically running customized migration in the collection database world in Arinka database Halcidoi database leap index and many species files which just get to the taxon works a uh, few months ago uh, I would say that 
all data migration are lost and some data get definitely lost and it's um, we may overlook something or in some cases uh, our data model is a little bit more strict than the original database uh, original database may lose just uh, use a text field and we use um, uh, numerical field for the data and it, the data just doesn't may, uh, may, uh, get to text works uh, for example uh, year is a four digit uh, uh, record in text and works but the original database may have five digits for the year it's a mistake in the original database so this data may not get migrated into text and works um there is some difficulty for the data providers uh, when they get used to the original database which into tax and works could be a little bit difficult because you have to learn your system and find certain things which we could migrate to tax works and uh, fix those uh manually after the migration uh, and when the data in tax and works we also try to be as useful as possible we do soft validation especially on nomenclature which uh, match all the rules which we can encode in tax and works uh, rules of nomenclature from botanical zoological uh, etc and we providing it as a guiding point and this is just a few examples uh, original interface of the artoptera uh, species file and the current version is in the uh, taxon pages uh, universal uh, both again available in the British Museum website and uh, data uh, provided from Taxon Works, uh, 3 8 World Akinarinka database, and Hopper's website uh, in the Taxon pages. And with this, I would like to thank you and I would be happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Dimitri. That was a great presentation, just even in general about the, the nature of migrating data from one place to another. I want to chime in with one thought other that came to as well is uh, many of you are thinking about migrating data, I believe. Um, I would just like to point out that this takes time. Um, Dimitri is highly, uh, you know, he's an expert at doing this kind of thing. And when we get a large database, it's maybe a, a, a month of hard coding to get the basics in place. And then there's iteration. But that iteration and testing and stuff can take literally years until everything aligns. So if you have a legacy database that you've been working on for 10 years of nomenclature, like I don't know if Peter is here, but if we were thinking of moving the reptile database to Taxon Works, um, we would be talking about years um, to do that. And it's not that we're doing years of work, it's that there's little time gaps that emerge all over the place in gaining the understanding of the data, in writing the code, in sharing that, in refining it, and repeating, maybe in finding funding to help pay for that that work. Um, so, when you, if you are thinking about migrating your data, expect that it is going to take way longer than you think it will, even if it seems fairly simple. Uh, is the lesson there? Other qu questions for for um, for Dimitri? I'll also add that that um, one of the really nice things about Taxon Works is that uh, all of the models have very simplified code behind them now. So everything that we can do in the interfaces, we can do in code quite easily, like chain things together. We could demo that in the end conference. And this gives us the real power in being able to, to turn um, those tables in combination with the script, the same code that we're using inside Taxon Works uh, into a successful data migration. So that's a real nice uh, plus to to the whole system. Yeah, just just to add a little bit to that, what we usually see after the migration, you know, some of the databases which come in from the legacy data could be FileMaker, it could be Microsoft Access or something. In most cases, it's a, just a single person project or just few people who work on the project. And in most cases, we see when the data moved to tax and works, we see that community started building around the, the project. Some people can join and because tax and works is all about collaboration. So mm -hmm. you have many people joining project and we see, especially a project like 
for example, uh, Halcidoi database, Akinorenko database, Artoptera species file. We have already a very active community of the people who jointly uh, modify and editing, updating the records in the, in the okay. project. Yeah, it's a really, thanks, Dima. That's a really important point that once you're in TaxonWorks, you're immediately pre adapted to expanding your community. Whereas once you might have had a database on your desktop, when you're in 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 TaxonWorks, you can start sharing your expertise and and collaboratively editing that data, which is really huge for a lot of communities. It also takes communities time to figure this out about how to best do it. 